The other thing we've got as well, right, you know for a fact that we get like these fucking weirdos that turn up to our gigs. Yeah. Who like always pester us and they've come to our flat. You mean that, that guy with the cat? Well, yeah, he's one of them. And yeah. the, I mean, you don't seem to offer, you said, you the, the venues pay you to, um... Who said the venues pay me? You said the venues pay you to yeah. sort out security. Yeah, we thought you were a non-profit, um... Non-profit local I'll bank no organisation, but no, no, I'll make no money. Bullshit, you make no money. I'll, they, give you, they give you money to put people on the doors I'll to look after no the money. bands. If, I, if, if you're in security, they'll have to come out of my own pocket. And that's not going to do me any good. And that, that guy, you know, we're talking about one specific guy at the moment, aren't we? Yeah. Yeah. He's, he's no threat to you whatsoever, for God's No sake. threat? He sent us a disembowelled cat through the post. Yeah. Uh, what's what's the, the, the cat going to do? Put itself back together and blow the air off or something like that? It's not going to do anything to you, is well, it? Well, we're I more worried about him than the cat, to be honest. Well, I think the cat's dead and gone. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, for the great vein of his next gig, in the next couple of nights, we're... It's not worth having security for that. It's not. It's just not worth it at all. I mean, when you come to one of their next gigs, you tell me they've drawn a really weird crowd. Really weird. But in the end, I mean, I understand that, but it's the nature of their music, and they're going to get weird, weirdos coming to their gigs. And when you've got, what, two guys up there trying to stop, what, 200 weirdos trying to get onto stage, it's not going to happen, so what's the point? Well, we know for a fact that you get paid, so stop bullshitting Who's us. told you that? We know you do. Who told you that? We've got the hard evidence. The landlords of the venues that we play. Oh, they haven't told you anything like that because I'm not getting paid. They assume we get paid. They say, they say, oh, how's the, how's, um, how's the wager working out for you? And we're like, well, what the fuck are you talking about? You I'm fact, no, no, you no, but I'm, you, I'm, what, you I'm promised us that you I'm would rubbish. pay us? Oh, yeah. When I, when I got to the point, I could pay you. And I'm not getting to the point where I can pay you yet. You start doing the crowd, and I'll pay you. What are you, what are you doing for me? So, so I can get to the pulling the crowds, and we pull a bigger crowd than anyone else that plays for you. So don't give us that bullshit. Um, I don't like the grand language of his music whatsoever. Uh, there's no doubt they've got talent, but their music is what can I say? Just way, way, way out there, and it's the weirdos, and it's it's not my music. But what I do like about it, and um, no, I tell you what I love about it is the money they bring in. I mean, every single weirdo that comes in is going to spend, I don't know, 50 quid on a night just to get him pissed. And, as I said before, 20% of the bar goes into our pockets. Oh, well, show me the proof then. You, you get the, um, the, the receipts and stuff like that. And I'll... How about we just said that we, we told you we wouldn't play for it anymore? How does that sound? It sounds, yeah. I'll just find a better band than you. You'll find a better you find band. a better band in hey, Northampton. Yeah, in you're Europe. in Northampton, mate. I don't think we're going to be finding anyone that's any better. You're not the only band in Northampton. No, no, we're not, but we're one of the best. You are a good band, I'll give you that, but I can find a better band. While they're making me money, I'm going to keep putting them on. And as soon as those weirdos go away, then I do a great value whether we're going to follow them, as far as I'm concerned. Well, we, basically, we just feel like we've been cheated at the moment, you know what I mean? It's, and it just takes a piss. Yeah, you know, like the way we see it, you know what I mean, he's got he's got a big car and he's fucking, he's making out he hasn't got any money and whatever. But we know for a fact he has, because we've spoken to his partner, Ben, who's like, who said, yeah, 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 yeah. but like, uh, you, I mean, you look at his bands, he's got like loads, he pays them. His bands are all like fine with it, but all the bands that Nathan does are all f f hate him. And, and obvi like, obviously he's keeping the money, because the other day, I was, I was walking through town, I saw him with a blonde on his arm. And he had a sheepskin jacket on, expensive sheepskin jacket on. And wasn't she wearing a mink coat? <coughs> she was wearing a mink coat. Strolling yeah, around like that and like telling us that he's not getting paid. And his brother's, you know, funding all these bands to take, go into the studio and that. And, you know, he, I mean, it's just so obvious. You know. Someone's getting cheated here and I don't think it's Nathan. However, by the time the gig comes about, money is the least of their worries. Fucking hell, this is my fault, is it? Cheers. Where's Rob? Are you coming? Oh, yeah, you're yeah, at least. So we have a security tonight, then, Nathan. I didn't think we needed him. You didn't think we needed him? We Remember what we told you? We told you about this psycho. He'd be sending us dead cats in the fucking post. Yeah. You knew he was coming. You get stacks of psychos. Can you, can you believe that? I don't know if to laugh or cry. You know, you know, they invite me to their gig. You know, they like... They like, begged me to come on that, 
And like, I so I just, you know, I've just turned up out of nowhere, and like, I thought I could get up on stage, you know, become like the new Bez, you know, like you know, you know, like for Happy Mondays, but I'm the Bez for them, you know, great venue robbery. And like, they invited me up in it. I even saw, I saw Andy, you know, going like this, you know, I saw him, you know, and then like, all of a sudden, he just whacked me, and now look, can't even look at me eye. And why is this one particular guy who decides to smash his fucking guitar on it? Oh, you know what I mean? He comes running up to Andy going, Mummy, Mummy, you're my mummy! And fucking dying for Andy. Oh, yeah. Andy has to defend himself against this guy, this guy who's pretty big. Obviously, he's going to get the nearest thing that he's got in his hand. Well, he's with it, and it just happened to be the guitar. <coughs> no, well, basically, we were sat there, we were going through our set, as, as per, you know, the fans were digging it and whatever, and then all of a sudden that freak who fucking sent us the cat comes charging up through the pub. He wasn't even, the worst part was, he wasn't even there for, like when when we started. So if he was that good a fan, he'd have fucking been there. Comes charging in, I'm near the last song, up to the up to the stage screaming, Mummy, Mummy, you're my mummy. And the last person I thought he was saying it to was me. And then I just realised as soon as he got on the stage and was coming towards me, there was nothing else I could do. I had to, I had to hit him with the, with the fucking guitar, which is like, I mean, we probably enjoy it all done now. Yeah, a situation that occurred to us, and uh, it was bound to happen. It's not my fault. It's them. The wind music's going to attract the weird people, and I'm not going to do about it. I just can't believe Nathan's reaction to the situation. You know what I mean? He's just so laid back and not quite cocky about it. And, you know, he wants some compensation, because obviously he didn't provide the security, and the weapon to the guitar, and he knew that that psycho was knocking about. And you know what I mean? It's alright for him to stroll around with his mink coat on and blonde woman on each arm, driving around in his flash sports car. At the end of the day, we, we're not seeing any of this money, and we never were. And when something like this happens, you expect to, you at least expect some sort of compensation. You know what I mean? Even if you just I don't know, if you replace the guitar or something like that. But nothing doesn't look like we're going to get a thing. Because so, I can't even believe I even liked them. They're going nowhere. I tell you. <laughs> they're going nowhere. I mean, they're not going to become like the steps, are they? Or the, oh no, or the, you know, the hearsay of this world, are they? You know, <laughs> they're just going, they're just going downhill. <laughs> Artistic and financial success rarely go hand in hand, especially for musicians. And for the great vein robbery, it's still some way out of reach. But now is their opportunity to reevaluate and reflect on the past few days' lessons so that they can one day achieve just the right measure of commercial and creative compromise. Your free breath is now that menthol. When you're not around, I start going mental. You're addictive, like custard cream Oh yeah, you're my queen Your skin is like silk too You make me feel so great when we're